So at this point, what we've done is hopefully created an account. And um, it takes me to the home screen here. So again, my screen might look a little different than yours. Uh, but basically, we have some icons. So I've got also my iPad right here just to compare. I should get out my Android phone also to compare. But all of the, um, all of the uh, devices look a little bit different. Um, all the apps often look a little different because there's different hardware and so forth. Uh, the iPhone version might look different than the Android version because the iPhone only has one button. That, that button in the center, where Android has the back button and the home button and the search button. Uh, I've got a Windows phone over here, so it also looks a little bit different. It's got different sorts, of, different sorts of hardware and such. So if it doesn't look exactly the same, that's okay. Um, on my particular device, uh, I see that there is a little house, which is the home screen. On that home screen, it's just like on Inst uh, just like on Twitter or Pinterest. You go to your home screen and you see all of the content of those accounts that you are following. So if I'm following 20 accounts, all of their photos will show up here. On mine, it's it's not showing me any photos because I don't have any connections. I don't have any friends yet. Well, as a business, I'm thinking of them as customers, perhaps. So I don't have any customers that I'm connected with. Okay. I've got uh, an icon that is this little kind of like star on top of the Christmas tree, but on yours, uh, like the iPhone, um, I don't believe you have an exact one like that. Do you guys have a little star icon? No. Square with a circle? No, that's the take a photo icon. Uh, so you might not have this, that's okay. Um, let's look at this instead. You have a little magnifying glass, right? Mm -hmm. Click the magnifying glass, and that uh, brings up trending tags, explore posts, and so that's your search. At the top, uh, I've got search users and hashtags, so yours is probably more full-featured, and it's got trending tags and all of that. So we'll look at that a little later. But this is a way for you to connect with possible uh, customers and topics and such. I can search. I'm just going to skip it. So we have an icon that should have a little heart inside of a bubble. So that, that heart right there, that's the notifications. Notifications, just like every other social network. When someone follows me on Twitter, I'll get a notification. When uh, someone likes my Facebook page, I get a notification. I'm going to get notifications on Instagram, just like the other networks. I see that it's got you and following. So these notifications are for you, which means me. These notifications, in from my point of view, this is who followed me, this is who commented on my photo, this is um, who sent me a message, and so forth. So, so that's you. That's your account, your notifications. You've got also following. Uh, I don't have any that I'm following yet, so mine is empty there. But if you are following accounts, you will see what those accounts, what, what they have done. Like over here on my iPad, I'm loaded up on another account. And it says here, Elsa liked eight photos, Kishu liked eight photos, Wako liked three photos, Jason followed, Matt cuts art, and Derek art. So I'm seeing the activity of those that I'm following. That could be useful because if I'm following certain accounts, let's say related to art, and I'm an artist, I want to see who are those artists following that I can also follow. I can't exactly show you here just yet until I start to follow, but we'll get back to that. That's the notifications, that little heart. And in mine, mine looks like a little ID card, but yours will look at the bottom like a little, a little generic person. Do you see the little man on the bottom row? Mine looks like a, an ID card. And when you go there, that's your profile. So I created this username, and I put in this full name, and it shows I have zero followers and I am following zero. 
much you want to know. Look at this. Click on the little man right there. Do you see a little man on your screen? I can get out of that. Just click the check mark. There we go. And Where's the, oh, there's the little man. And so these are my stats in that I don't have any followers and following. And here's where I can edit my profile. If I don't want this username here anymore, I can change it. If I don't want this full name, I can change it. What I would recommend, like I do with all the networks, is add a biography. It didn't have us add a biography when we first created the account. We want to look at adding a biography right now. So do you see a button that says Edit Profile? Go ahead and click Edit Profile. So there's name, there's username, there's a photo. Uh, mine says URL, but you will see a little spot to add an address. A little info box for a biography. Is that on your Windows phone? This is this is on my Windows phone. Yes. So it's a little different. Right. Yeah. I just wanted to verify that. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had some sort of screen projector for my for my iPad so I can show that or my Android but I don't have a screen projector for for these and so um, you should add a biography maybe not right now but there's a spot for adding a biography the reason you want to do that again is to convince people to follow you um, People are going to look at your profile. There's no biography. They don't really know what you're about. They might take the time to scroll through your pictures to figure out what you're about. But if they see their biography right away, which is the first thing that pops up when, you, when they visit your profile, your biography will be up at the top over here. So if you, if you do edit your biography, put in something relevant there, hopefully people will then um, know why to follow you. And then, of course, you can use the modern lingua franca of emoji, if you'd like. These little icons are very popular nowadays. If you've got your phone set up for emoji, you can also put those little icons in your text. What you want to do is um, add a biography at some point, and I've got also URL here, so that would be a good place also to add my my website because that'll be an active link if someone visits my profile and sees the biography art for sale click here they'll be able to click that link and actually go to my website now mine at the bottom says posts are private but I don't see that on my iPhone version and on the iPhone version I see private information an email a phone number and gender do you guys see that also at the very bottom and so you can change that if you'd like and there's also a spot to add my photo Android and it's not an Android. Oh, which is why I asked him if it was Windows. Mm -hmm. So the um, oh yes, private info. There it is. So you want if you do make any changes, uh, you want to click done to save that. And you can always go back later. Yep, just like any other network. 
Let me go ahead and save that, and it'll take me back to my biography. Okay, so at the very bottom of your screen, mine looks like that, like the little Instagram icon, but yours just looks like a circle and a square, which is supposed to look like a camera. But if you tap that centermost icon at the very bottom, that's to take a photo. So I'm going to tap that. And on yours, most likely what it'll do is it will show your last photos. If it doesn't show you right away, you just have to confirm that it lets that it you want it to, to let it look at your photo library. So uh, on my iPhone over here, uh, it's showing me my very last photo and I can select it so I can select to upload a photo at this point. That's what my Windows phone is also showing, upload a photo. But I want to shoot a photo right now, so instead I see at the bottom of my and of my iPhone it says library photo video. So I'm going to click photo and that will let me take a photo right now. If I tap here on my phone to take a photo, I'm about to take a photo of the class. Okay, everyone, smile. All right, so I took that photo. I'm going to accept it. Let me take a photo on this one over here, too. So I shot the photo horizontally, so it's a wide photo. All right, it's wide. But this is Instagram, so I traditionally would only have enough space for a square photo. The modern version of Instagram now, I can have the, um, the, um, the full-sized one if I want. So where do they put that? Let's say I'm going to use the traditional, which is just a, a square photo. And I can zoom in and out and have only a specific part of the screen of the photo. Let's say I'm going to have the photo here, and I'll click the check mark. So you're going to see a lot of icons. I'm not going to explain every single icon of the creative process because this is where you can be creative. I've got my my screen here with a few icons at the top and at the bottom. At the bottom are the different filters. And again, they might look different than what, what you've got. But for example, I've got Clarendon, Gingham, Moon, Lark, Reyes, Juno, Slumber, etc. Over here I've got Amaro, Mayfair, Rise, Hudson, etc. The point of this is to be creative and to click on any one of them and see how my photo changed. So my normal photo looks like that, and then this one with Amaro filter looks like that. Mayfair looks like that. So there's plenty of filters, built-in filters to change to give the, the photo a different kind of style. So I showed my dad Instagram several months ago, and he said, why do the photos look so ugly? <laughs> and I said, what's cool now is to do photos that look not perfect. It used to be that we took photos on film, maybe we didn't know exactly what they looked like until they got printed, then when we got the whole roll of photos printed from Walgreens, oh, this one's terrible, throw it away, this one's terrible, throw it away, this one's a keeper, because it was the most sharpest, clearest, best photo. Now with digital cameras, I can take 40 pictures in one minute and then decide this is the perfect one. So now Instagram was sort of wanting to go backwards. Let's bring back some of the imperfection. Let's bring back some of the ugliness the ugly ducklingness of things. And that's what these filters are, are a lot about, like X-Pro right here. Like on, a normal, uh, on a normal opinion, it might be, this is too dark. Why, why, does the, why does the color look too dark? Or why is that so overexposed? The point is that you can be as creative as you want here, or you can just keep it on normal, and it'll look like how it came out of your camera. But once you start to play with these filters and see like this filter would look really good, like this one, I kind of like that. It's kind of like got a stronger color to it. The, the, the dark tones are different. They've got a little bit of vignette on the edges. So I think, personally, that filter looks way better than that normal one. Now that normal one's starting to look boring. That's up to you, of course, to, to decide that or not. 
there's a bunch of different there's a few different black and white ones there's one called willow inkwell inkwell i like because it's also very high contrast but anyway let's say you like a filter and then at the top on on your We can maybe do it like this. So here I've got my iPad. Um, my iPad icons might look a little bit more like yours, right? So you've got at the top these uh, these three icons. This first one's supposed to be the filter, and then Lux, which is just a way to change the light. So as I change that, it gets darker overall, lighter, etc. And then I've got that little wrench. What that wrench does is it gives me other options down here. So maybe to adjust and rotate, contrast, all of this stuff. So I'm not going to go through all of these um, possible edits. This is the artistic part of things. Let's say I chose some effects that I liked, so I can click the, the next button. And you're going to see a screen that at the top would say followers or direct. Uh, if I have it on followers, all my followers are going to uh, possibly see my my photo. If I change it to direct, I'm sending this photo directly to a few a few people. So I want to keep it on followers. I have the option to tag people. That's sort of like on, on, on Twitter where I, I post a tweet and I also mention someone else's account so I can tag people and that's going to allow me to, to tap on people's pictures and then say who that is. Um, but for the moment, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tag any people. These people are those that are also on Instagram and I know their account. Uh, let's say at the moment on my new account, I don't know anyone just yet. Uh, you might have the button for Add Location. If you select Add Location, mine says Add to Photo Map Location. So then it's going to search what are the locations nearby. So I see San Diego Continuing Education. So now this photo is going to be tagged with a particular location. That would be very useful to getting your customers to be interactive. Let's say I've got a restaurant and then I'm going to be publishing stuff on Instagram that says uh, have something to eat and don't forget to tag us on Instagram. So people can, can tag you as a business or they can also add you to the map. That way when someone searches on Instagram for a location for example they would see all of the photos that other people took of that business at that location. So again, social, having the social aspect in social media. And you probably then have the networks Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Flickr. Mine's got Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Flickr, and vContact, and Foursquare. If yours doesn't have those, don't worry. But you've got the big ones, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Flickr. So if you've also got a Facebook, which you probably do if you took this class, you've probably also got a Twitter, which you probably do if you took this class, you'll be able to share this photo to those networks by just turning that on, and it'll ask you to log in. But then when you post this on Instagram, it'll automatically go to those networks. You can send it to Flickr and Tumblr and so forth. What's that? What's the question? Tag people is that you you have people in a photo, you tag them, and then their name will be attached to their face on the picture. 
But you have to type in the name. I, I think you start typing the name and then it'll give you suggestions of, of the person. Yes? When you tag someone, um, will it also post your picture to their Instagram? Like it does. No, Facebook doesn't do that, it just notifies you of the tag, or does it actually put it on your wall? Okay. It notifies them. Just notifies them, it doesn't put it up on them. Yeah, and then they can choose to put it on their timeline if they'd like. But once you tag someone, it's going to. Um, notify them. So on my on my iPad here, just for fun, I'm just selecting one of my contacts and then now that person has been added to there. But they're not going to get this photo on their timeline, they're just going to get a notification. So um, the thing is though, unfortunately, um, the Twitter Okay, the Facebook integration is really nice because Facebook owns Instagram. So when you post a photo on Instagram and select Facebook, the full-size, beautiful-looking picture will go to your Facebook account. Unfortunately, the thing with um, the thing with um, the thing with um, Twitter is that uh, you don't get the Instagram photo in your tweet anymore. A few years ago you would. You would see the original nice looking photo right on the tweet, but Twitter decided to change things and now the th only thing that you'll see on, in on Twitter is the text that you write up on the caption and the link to the photo on Instagram. You don't see the photo anymore. Uh, and that was a decision that Twitter made several years ago. Uh, which is pretty unfortunate, but it makes sense because they're rival social networks. Why would Twitter be giving much help to Instagram? And so who knows if that was a good move or not, but just by seeing the numbers, Instagram has 400 million users and Twitter has about 315 million, so who knows if that has anything to do with any problems, but if you do turn on Twitter, you have to sign into Twitter and then it'll post to Twitter. Uh, Tumblr and Flickr are work like Facebook in that when you upload something to Instagram, the full picture will go to Flickr or Tumblr, which is nice. So what I like to do is when I upload my photos to Instagram, I also turn on Flickr. So I have a secondary Flickr account just to store my photos there as well. So I'm not going to turn on any of those networks. You can if you'd like to, but you want, what you want to do up on the caption, this now is the art and the science of adding a little caption, a little text to your, to your images. So right here, uh, you can write as much as you want, actually. You're not limited to any length. But if you're sending this also to Twitter, then you run into Twitter's limitation. Because Twitter has the limitation of, of that link of the picture itself and whatever you write here. So you can write as much as you want here. It's the very first link at the top. So what you can do here is you can write um, anything you want. I'm going to say um, social media class at San Diego Continuing Education. And so here I'm writing a little bit of text that is a caption for my photo. What you can also do is add hashtags here. You can add hashtags like on Twitter. And hashtags are very popular on Instagram to find your content. So let's say I'm going to add hashtag SDCE. That's the hashtag for San Diego Continuing Education for our college here. And uh, there's a limit to the number of hashtags. I believe it's 30. You can add 30 hashtags. But at a certain point, too many hashtags make you look like a spammer, doesn't it? So I would say, like Twitter, 
one, two, three hashtags, one, two, or three hashtags. Um, same sort of thing, although on Instagram I, I do see many more, but the limit is 30. But if you do 30, you look very spammy. Um, you know, one to three, maybe five. What are the core ones that really explain your photo and hopefully will get you found? Yes. I noticed when I started trying to type in a hashtag that it gave me options for hashtags and it yes. showed me how many people are interested or have posted in that hashtag. Exactly. It doesn't show up on mine here, but on my iPad you'll see that. You'll see that as you start typing hashtags. You type the hash symbol, start writing a hashtag, and I'm typing here San Diego. It says that's used 8 million times, which is good and bad. It means this is a popular hashtag. But that means it's too popular. I might zoom by on the list of all San Diego hashtags. People might not find me. The next most popular one with San Diego then is San Diego Zoo. Well, I, would, I, got, I wouldn't consider you guys zoo animals, so I wouldn't uh, select that. San Diego Chargers, that's got 75,000. San Diego Comic Con, 60,000. So it's telling me right here popular ta hashtags. And I might not want to select the hashtags that are super popular. 8 million hashtags, I'm going to get lost. What if I do instead SD? One million. So okay, that's still a lot of people where I could possibly get find, uh, found, but not so many people that I'm going to get lost, perhaps. Um, so judicious use of hashtags is recommended. I'm doing SDCE and it says 506 posts. So on the one hand, it'll be easier to stand out. But on the other hand, if it's too low, that means no one's paying attention to that hashtag. So let's say I've uh, crafted my message there. I'm going to then click the, the OK button to finish writing my my message and then share that little share icon at the bottom so it might just be a bit slow for me because of the network but eventually it'll pop up there. It'll show um, my account, my name. It's got a location. Um, information at the top such as uh, when it was posted 24 seconds ago there's my text at the bottom uh, I've got the little heart for like the little speech for comment and you've got the same thing the heart icon the speech the speech icon and then you've got this little bending arrow in, uh, and we saw this before. In Facebook, if you wanted to share something, we've got the share button. On Twitter, if you wanted to share something, you've got retweet. On Instagram, you've also got this retweet sort of button that's going to uh, send it out to other people. So I have connections where I can send it to people, but you might not if your account is brand new. So that send might not really do very much. And then you've got those three dots. So 
So if you uploaded something that you actually shouldn't have uploaded, you can click on those dots and then you have, for example, delete, remove it. No, it only had those four Flickr, Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. Well, actually, if you, after you post a photo like this, and then you click on those three dots in the corner of your photo, then I see there there's share. And on that share, I see at the bottom email, which is Gmail. All right, let me let me show here. So I've got um, I uploaded a photo, and then right below, you do you see those three dots? So if you tap those three dots, do you see share? And then on share, I see all of those networks, and then I see or email, copy link. You might not you might not have that if you haven't fully set up your account, your Instagram account. Hmm? What does fully setting up mean? Um, I think they're going to send you an email to confirm your email. Okay. Because you know anyone can create an account, any spammer could create an account. So if you set up your account completely with checking your email, uh, I think they give you perhaps that extra feature. All right, so we, we shared one photo. This is what you want to do on a regular basis. So actually, what we're going to do is take one more break, because what I want to do is give you a chance to experiment a little bit more with taking these photos and such. So let's uh, take a break. It's 2.16. We'll be back at 2.26. Uh, you should practice Instagram a little bit more, and then we'll proceed.